Are you worried about a potential reduction in rating? Are you worried that by submitting another claim, you the VA might look at other evidence for your other disabilities and set you up for a re-examination? Well, welcome to Battle Buddy Ben, and we're going to go over the following in this episode. When can the VA decrease your rating? What does Title 38 and M21-1 say? And how can you protect yourself and fight? Let's get started. When can the VA decrease your rating? So there are three times in which the VA can decrease your rating. First, obvious reason, an error was made during the initial rating. So they made an uh, initial rating on you and then they made an error in that. And so they go back and through audits, they come across your record. They say, oh, this is what, there was an issue here. We need to change your rating to a lower rating. That's particularly the main example of this happening is through audits. So the VA does do audits of decisions to make sure that the veterans got the right decision. So if they come across yours, they say there was an error, you got too high, they will lower it. In very, very rare cases, they might say you got too low and they raise it. Possible. There is a material change in your disability and we're going to go over that later on in this presentation. And there obviously, if there's a material change for improvement, say you can walk now, you don't have chronic plantar fasciitis and you can walk fine now, people see you walking or your range of motion for your, say for example, your knee is better, they may change your rating. They may bring you in for an examination and reevaluate you. Number three, the law says you need a reexamination. So this, the great example of this, and I'm putting in parentheses there, possible reduction because they can always re-examine you and keep you at the same level. The, pot, the, the most times I've seen this occur is with pre-stabilized disabilities, one, and two, cancers. So cancers are typically pre-stabilized, especially if you are going through cancer, they typically will rate you at 100% per Title 38 disability schedule, and then what they do is they come back after you finish your, your chemotherapy or whatever treatment you're going through. And then six months later, they'll reevaluate you and give you a rating at that point for which you are then, you know, the disabilities you have after your treatment. If you're finding this information useful and helpful, hit the like and subscribe buttons below this video to let other veterans and friends and family of veterans to find this video and get their questions and concerns about this topic answered. Also check out more content like this here on the Battle Buddy Ben YouTube channel. Then check out my website. It is BattleBuddyBen.com. I have a lot of great links, templates, and information about the VA disability claims process on there. The rating reduction process. So here's a, a quick process flow diagram that I put together based on my knowledge of the rating reduction process. So it first starts up at the top the VA determines a reduction is needed. After they do that, after evaluating the evidence of that, and they have to have evidence, and we're gonna go over that later on, that the VA will then notify the veteran because they have to notify you. They can't just change it. They have to notify you that they are proposing a rating reduction. And you go here to that text on the left. Notice a proposed reduction is not a final decision. So it's not final, they're, they're just, telling you, hey, we're proposing that we lower your rating and you cannot appeal it at this point because it really is just, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. This really, they didn't make, they didn't do anything yet. You're still getting paid at say, say you're a hundred percent, for example, you're still at a hundred percent, you know, so you, you're still getting paid there, but hey, we're think we're, we're, we're proposing a reduction and these are the reasons, and it should say it right there in that letter or notification. So that's the VA. So say I'm the VA, I'm telling you, the veteran, I'm thinking about lowering your rating. What do you, what can you do? So as a veteran, now I'm the veteran, I go, oh, oh crap. Uh, they're going to lower my rating and they're going to take my money away from me. How, how dare you do that, VA? So what, what can I do? So the, you have, you have, Two things, and I have the two arrows there. I probably could have put them in series. I just did it this way to kind of break them out. But there are two deadlines. There is a 30-day deadline and a 60-day deadline. So the 30-day deadline is if you want it to 
request a higher level review. So higher level review. So you'll say you're appealing their proposal. Yeah, you you can say I want to I want to have a higher level review when the time comes. So that that will come after this next one, the sixty day. So this you have sixty day to gather your new relevant evidence and submit it to the VA to say, hey, you know what? Nothing's really changed. I'm still at this rating, or in the event you're worse, I'm worse than I was when you initially rated me. So that that's a possibility that comes out of this that you actually get a higher rating. If you're at 100% already, you can't get higher than 100%. So, but if you're lower, say you you have a 50% rating and there's a 60 or 70% rating that you could potentially get up to, you that, that is a possibility as well. Rare because they wouldn't notify you of a reduction unless they believe that you had improved. So, and then after you submit that, maybe after you go through your higher level review, the VA will make a decision on it and then send you that decision. That decision can be good where they just keep you and say, hey, you know what? There's nothing's going to change or it can be bad where they say we're going to reduce it, but they can only reduce it below a certain level. So the VA rules for reduction. So I said like they have to notify you. So they have to do a review based on your entire history of the, that disability. So they have to look at all the evidence that's already in your file and that you've submitted. And this is where comes, submitting relevant medical evidence comes into play because if they don't have any evidence to show that you have improved or there was a material change that you improved, they shouldn't be doing this. They have to take prudent action. They have, this is all in the law. So this is all in Title 38 all these rules, which means because it's in Title 38, they have a fiducial responsibility to the citizens of the United States, not just veterans, but the entire citizen population in the United States to do the right thing and follow this law. They're not just doing this willy nilly to say, hey, I hate John Doe or Jane Doe veteran and I want to reduce their rating. They're doing this because they, it is in the law based upon a review of the entire history of the vet veteran's disability. The other one here is there's been an actual change since the last rating decision. So say you, you put in for an increase and maybe that increase is now you're, you have improved since that increase. They're going to look at that because they sent you to another re-examination or for a re-evaluation or they notice something in your record, say your VA health the records, that there's been material improvement. And now there is, they have a reason to believe that you aren't say at 50% level, you're at a 30% level and they can send a notice for redu proposed reduction. And again, number, the other, another bullet point, number three, material improvement. So you can't just say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm crippled 30 days, crippled every day in the month. Now I'm only crippled 29 out of 30 days. There has to be material, like they have to show that you can now function under ordinary conditions of life and work. Just like it says there in the last part of that, they can't just say, well, he can do that maybe one day out of the year. So that's an improvement from the whole year. So that's not really material, for example. And then finally, if they send you, they're going to probably send you to a CNP exam, unless they have enough evidence to show that you have improved by what you submit to them and what they have currently that they'll send you to a CMP exam and that report must be thorough, not just, yeah, you know, you get to see, you know, the problems with CMP exams, you get the speedy guy, you get the aggressive guy, you get the, the helpful guy. Well, hopefully you get the helpful one that might help you keep your, your rating. But if you get the other ones, they might not do a thorough job and you can argue that. And if the VA does not follow these rules, the reduction is not valid. So if you can prove through an appeal that they did not follow their rules or with a lawyer, this is where I would say get a lawyer involved because you want to understand that they are following the rules and they have to follow it because it is their job to follow this, that the VA must reinstate the rating if they did reduce you. Rules for reduction per M21-1. So the previous one was straight out of Title 38. These are the ones from M21-1, paraphrased to help for you to understand, they must show a defined time period that the material that there was materially improved. They can't just say, oh yeah, we saw you on this day and that was the day we saw you and you've showed improvement. They have to have a time period. So you go on say the first day of the year, they see you and you've improved, your disability has improved. 
and then they see you again six months later and then they see you again six months later from then and you've improved consistently through there that's the time frame they can't just say oh one one and done because maybe you're on your pain meds or whatever you're, you're taking and you are able to withstand some of the the pain and be able to whatever move whatever your disability is that you were able to to function somewhat normally can go for your examination so they have to show it a, a timeline they can't just show you had one and done so again thero must have evident prudent they must be prudent with this because they are dealing with ratings they must prove sustained improvement so again going back to that time frame they must show sustained improvement not a one-time occurrence and then the va must explain that to the veteran why they believe the improvement will be sustained so not only do they show you it that they have to prove it to you that it will be sustained and then it won't get worse again that you will come back for an increase so how do you protect yourself that's fine and dandy there's a 30-day rule for requesting hlrs a high level reviews there's a 60 day time limit for submitting new relevant evidence to prove that nothing has changed how do you protect yourself in this instance number one submit relevant ev medical evidence check out my video about relevant medical evidence you only want to submit the stuff that is pertaining to whatever disability you're claiming for wipe all that other stuff out don't submit that don't submit a claim if you don't have to you're a hundred percent don't submit a claim to get more VA disability because you're already at 100%. You can't go higher than that on the pay compensation scale. Check out your increases. Be careful. If you're increasing or putting in a claim for an increase in rating, make sure you're already not at the max. Because again, yeah, it's fine and dandy. You have, you, you got worse, but again, submit that relevant medical evidence. Hey, guess what? The VA rater is looking at my file again. So keep your head below the radar because you don't want them to be looking at you and you want them to happenstance come across you not forcing them by your own means to come across your file again to review it be careful with tdiu so total disability individual unemployability you must be aware that there is earned income limits for certain benefits there is also type of work protected environment if they see that you are working in a normal environment you might lose that tdiu benefit so be careful with that and if you're working in a normal environment and you're collecting tdiu they might also go and say hey maybe you aren't at this rating level that you are currently at for whatever disability you're at you have and then lastly don't commit fraud don't lie don't cheat etc this is a bad way i have a video about that you know don't lie cheat commit fraud because there are people watching you just remember the people are watching you walk out of the cmp exam walk out of that va medical facility walk in they're watching you there are cameras all over the place be careful you don't know who you're going to come across to at say the mall or at your place of worship or at your work or you know out to lunch or dinner or something you don't know who you're going to come across especially if you're in a big town where a lot there's military bases and a lot of va facilities such as virginia or florida or southern california it, you, you don't know who you're going to come across so you need to be aware of that but if you are committing fraud if you're lied or if you cheat it then there is a chance that you could get caught first of all you're probably gonna go to jail but there is some charade that if you do get called into a re-examination that you have to remember exactly what happened how you acted what your disabilities are for and what the symptoms were so that you can keep up this facade but i always say don't don't do any of that just be yourself tell the truth have integrity have honor and remember that by doing this, you're screwing over every other veteran out there, as well as the United States that you served. And whatever you feel about the VA, that they're cheating or whatever, who cares? Don't do it. You go to jail. So protect yourself there, and you fight back by doing all this stuff. And just a review of what you need to claim if you were to put in a claim. 
current diagnosis, description of the in-service occurrence, link to a service-connected disability, official letter, me medical nexus, service con service nexus if you are going for presumptive, if you meet the time frame and place of, you know, the, the place in the world, and then statements in support of claims and buddy letters to tell the VA how this particular disability is affecting your ability to have gainful employment and a normal social life. If you have any comments or questions about this topic, please place them in the comment section or send me an email at contact at battlebuddyben.com. If you like what you viewed, hit that like and subscribe button to let others know about this video and the YouTube channel where you'll find videos just like this and much more about the VA disability claims process. Also check out my website. I have a lot of great links, templates, and information about the VA disability claims process on it. The website is battlebuddyben.com. It is also on the screen. Keep working hard and good luck with your claims.